In this Wasteland 3 video, I want to take a look at the best perks for Wasteland 3 and discuss just exactly what these do, which ones are the best ones, and how you can use them effectively in and outside of combat. Not all of these will be available to every character because you have to have at least one point in each skill in order to see these, but you can see them if you click the Show Unavailable Perks, look through them, and see what you're aiming for. First, I want to take a look at the general perks. These are perks that any character can take, and you can take them without having spent any ability points. The first one I want to draw your attention to is Healthy. This increases your hit points by 35. This is a huge amount. This is about a 50% increase in health for most characters, or a 35% increase for a lot of characters. So if you find your characters are dying very quickly, uh, which can very much happen on the harder difficulties, this is an absolutely great perk to take. Moving along to automatic weapons, the first one I think you should probably take is called Gopher Hunter. This is going to make it so enemies gain 25% less benefit from covering when attacking. This is going to help you all throughout the game because enemies love to cover in this game and it can really wreck your accuracy and damage. So take advantage of this as soon as you can because it's passive. It doesn't cost you any AP or anything like that. It's going to be used every time you fire if you're using an automatic weapon. Spray and Pray and Puncturing Shot are both very good choices, but I don't think you're going to want to take them early on. Your hit chance is already the lowest it's going to be at the beginning of the game, and Spray and Pray lowers it by another 25%. So you're probably not going to gamble like a 50% shot by adding another minus 25% or a 70% shot down to 50 if you can help it. Uh, additionally, Puncturing Shot seems great, uh, and it is good, but you have to have so many, so many enemies on the screen to get best use of it. Usually at the beginning of the game where the you know difficulty is rather high, particularly on harder difficulties, you're going to try and destroy as many enemies with explosives as quick as you can, so you're not going to get as much use out of it early on. Later in the game when there's just tons and tons of enemies, you're going to make better use of that skill. Or perk, sorry. Now, Reckless is a great skill for submachine guns because usually you need to get close to your enemies to use these weapons, so you're going to run up, blast them, and then probably get into cover. So you don't have to fire from cover using this ability, and indeed if you're using a submachine gun, which has very short range, you're probably not going to be firing from cover that often, so this is a very good perk to pick up. Double Tap is an exceptionally good perk. If you attack an enemy twice, then the second attack is going to be critical hit, which is bonus damage, and you tend to attack targets twice when you're using assault rifles, this happens all the time. You usually have the exact number of action points to fire twice in a given round. So this is a very good perk to pick up if you're using automatic weapons. Stormer is also great, as I mentioned before, with the submachine gun. You're going to have to try and close ground in order to use these very effectively. And moving costs a lot of AP, so this is going to allow you to move and then fire at no AP cost. So this is going to be very, very useful if you're going for like a run-and-gun type build. And consider picking this one up if you're using SMGs. Trigger Happy is probably the best overall perk for automatic weapons. Gaining 3 AP once a turn when you kill an enemy with an automatic weapon. It's kind of like Executioner from Divinity Original Sin 2's talent. We know how good that is. It's similar here. And as far as I know, this should stack with the Serial Killer Quirk, which also gives you 3 AP once per turn when killing an enemy at the cost of one action point. The thing about playing with automatic weapons, particularly SMGs, is that you have to commit. So you're going to move up, because enemies that are dug in cover don't tend to move up on you. So you're going to have to move up on them, spending a lot of action points moving. And if you can, you know, spend all your action points to kill that enemy, then maybe it'll give you a few action points where you can fire again or get into cover before your turn ends. So this is just a really, really good perk. The first perk I want to draw your attention to in the melee combat line is Striking Distance. It gives you 0.5 combat speed when you have two melee weapons equipped. This is one in your primary and one in your secondary slot. This is big for melee characters because combat speed reduces the amount of AP you spend to move. You have to close the distance to enemies when you're playing melee, and you don't want to spend all your AP doing that, so you need to have high combat speed, and this is going to make that better for you if you have a melee in each slot. If you take a look at the Bloodsport perk, it makes it so that you attack with a blunt weapon. It critically hits stunned or blinded enemies. This is a great perk to take if you've taken Stunning Blow. Again, Stunning Blow is another one of those perks that reduces your hit chance, so you're probably not going to take it right out of the gate because your hit chance is going to be rather low early on. But once you have enough accuracy with melee combat, you're going to want to pick that up because being able to stun enemies is huge, and then maybe you hit them with your fists or whatever you hit them with to stun them, and then you pull out a blunt weapon and just critically hit them to the dome. So that's a great combo right there. Hack and Slash is phenomenal if you're going to be using bladed weapons. It's going to give you an extra attack if you attack twice in a row, which is going to be a pretty common if you're a melee character. You're going to move up and attack as many times as you can. Getting that bonus attack may kill that target for you, so this is an absolute must if you're going to be using bladed weapons as a melee character. And you can even, you know, have a bladed weapon in one slot and a blunt weapon in the other slot to make, you know, advantage of both of these perks. Pursuit is an excellent perk because it's going to make your next bladed weapon attack have a 25% critical chance, plus 100% versus slow targets. 
you move a lot when you're a melee character, so increasing your critical chance by 25% is a huge amount. And there are ways to slow targets with your ranged characters, and since you can take turns in any order you want on your team, you could maybe slow an enemy first so that you go in with that extra percent chance. Shrug it off is the last perk here, and I just think it's a little bit overrated. Plus two armor is nice for each enemy around you, but ideally you're not going to run into a group of enemies in melee. If you have enemies all grouped up, you're probably going to want to shoot explosives in them or set the area on fire. So you're probably not going to run into tons of enemies at once. There's probably certain scenarios in the game where this is going to be a huge payoff. But I think more often than not, you're not going to get a whole lot of benefit out of this perk. Taking a look at big gun perks, move up is a great one. This increases your combat speed, which again makes it so you can move with less AP. When you're using a big gun, your accuracy is usually pretty trash. So getting close enough to your target where you have good enough accuracy uh, is very important. So this is going to help you accomplish that, so I absolutely recommend taking that one. I think Suppressive Fire is probably a bit overrated early in the game. Early on in the game, you want to try and kill most enemies as quickly as you can, so suppressing them is not something you really need to do. But as the game, over the course of the game, and as it gets more difficult and there's more enemies and harder to kill enemies, this is something that's probably going to come in very, very handy against bosses or mini-boss type characters that, you know, have tons of health and you're not going to be able to burst them down in one or two turns. Keeping them suppressed is going to be crucial for that. So it's not something I would take early on in the game, but look to get it later if you're using, like, a heavy gunner type build. It's pretty much the same deal with Terrorizer. You're reducing the hit chance of the enemy, but ideally you'd rather be killing the enemy than just debuffing them. So you're probably going to use this on really hard to kill enemies if you're using a flamethrower, which is very, very situational. Pressure Cooker is a great perk for a heavy gunner. Part of your, you know, identity as a heavy gunner is taking out the heavy artillery of the other force or faction. And this is going to disable their vehicles for a couple of turns and take, make them take damage over time while you can take them apart. Vehicles tend to have rather large health pools, so this is perfect for something like that. But again, it's very situational, but probably by the time you get to 7 in Big Guns, uh, you'll probably want to start looking to take this perk. Steady Shot is excellent for any heavy gunner. Giving you extra evasion and hit chance and low cover is perfect. Uh, this is exactly what you're going to want to try and do with a heavy machine gun. If you're using one, is get somewhere with low cover and then unload. And having extra hit chance is just so much so helpful with a, a heavy machine gunner because you're always going to have accuracy issues, accuracy issues with these guns. So being able to get that extra hit chance and evasion is going to make your heavy gunner, who's usually going to be in the direct line of fire, stay alive much longer and be more effective. Widespread is another great perk. It's going to increase the firing arc of heavy machine guns and flamethrowers by 35%. That's not a ton, so this isn't probably the best perk in the line. I think that's probably steady shot. Um, but you're going to want to pick it up anyway, because being able to hit as many enemies as you can with flamethrowers and heavy machine guns is what being a heavy you know, gunner is all about, essentially. So pick this one up when you can get it. Taking a look at the brawling perks, Shallon Surprise uh, basically allows you to spend your combo meter points to do an increased damage. Every time you hit an enemy with a melee attack that's with fist weapons or your fists, you're going to build up a combo, and this basically uses those combo points to give you extra armor penetration and damage. So this is how you're going to spend that very, very effectively. Extreme Combo allows you to build up your combos even higher. Each time you attack, you're going to get more and more bonuses, and this is going to allow you to stack that even higher so you can do even more and more damage and deadly combo increases your critical chance by times two for each combo that point that you have um, instead of you know whatever the regular percent it goes up is so it's going to make it so that you critically hit more the more you swing away and fury of blows reduces the brawling cost uh, of each attack by one ap that's huge brawling attacks normally cost two ap if i'm not mistaken so this is going to reduce the cost to attack with your fist by one ap which means if you had a ton of ap you could attack eight nine times in a round uh, which would be a devastating amount of damage. When it comes to small arms, you want to take a look at Opportunist first. This increases your strike meter charge by 5% for each successful handgun attack. This is going to allow you to build up your precision strike, which is one of your more powerful attacks more quickly, which is always great. So consider picking up that one. Trick Shot is another one of those perks that gives you a minus 50% hit chance, but gives you an extra 3 AP and your strike meter is filled if instantly filled if you deal damage and it also deals 100% damage against marked targets. Uh, the problem with it is I don't know how many people want to gamble that they're going to hit. I mean, this is one of those where you scum, save scum and reload if you don't get, and I'm not a big fan of those type of abilities, so it could be worth it, but I don't recommend taking abilities that are RNG-based. Clear Cover is an excellent ability for those who are using shotguns. It's going to do cover damage to enemies that are in cover, wrecking their cover so that other enemies can hit them harder, or even you have better accuracy and you can hit them harder. So this is a great passive one to take. Draw is fucking phenomenal for a perk. 
Your first attack after reloading an empty weapon costs no AP. This is huge, particularly if you use like a shotgun that has like two shells, fire, fire for your four AP, reload, and then you get another shot. So if you're, you definitely want to take this one no matter what sort of small arms character you're going to be, but can definitely consider taking it if you're a shotgun user. Devastation, another great ability for shotgun users, plus 25 damage for each enemy hit with the same shot. The biggest upside of shotguns is, of course, their cone. They can hit tons of enemies in a cone in front of them, increasing the damage for each enemy in that cone, which you're already trying to maximize. Beautiful if you're a shotgun user. Counteroffensive is interesting because it's a way to deal with enemies, melee enemies that rush you and attack you. Uh, if you're a shotgun user or a small arm user, you're probably on the front lines anyway because you need to get close in order to have the best optimal range for those weapons. So this is probably going to come in very, very handy. You know, you move in, get a couple of attacks, take damage from a melee character, and then you just turn around and blow them in the face. So definitely take this one if you're using either of those type of weapons, but it's probably more handy for a shotgun user because the range is less on those weapons. When it comes to sniper rivals, mark target is much better on hard to kill enemies than regular enemies, obviously. But there just aren't so many that are that difficult to kill early on in the game that you're going to want to spend 2 AP marking them. Uh, your accuracy isn't usually so bad that you need it, so this will probably come in handy a lot later in the game when there are more difficult enemies. So I don't recommend worrying about taking this one first, even if you are a sniper build. Masterful Precision is excellent for a sniper rifle. This makes your precision strikes have a higher chance of inflicting critical hits. You want to deal as much damage with these as you can, and they already hit like a truck for a sniper. So you definitely want to take this one. Concentration is okay. As a sniper, you're already going to have tons of awareness and hit chance because you're going to be firing from the longest range possible. So gaining a 10% hit chance isn't a lot. Uh, and it means if you don't move for a turn, you don't move a lot as a sniper anyway. So you're probably going to take this one, but I think it's a lot better on paper than it probably is in practice. Chain ambush is absolutely devastating for a sniper build. If you don't use all of your AP on your turn, you can set up what's called an ambush. It's kind of like Overwatch in XCOM. This makes it so that if you kill a target with your ambush, they you know they move up and you fire, that you have another ambush queued up afterwards. So let's say like they all rush you and you just boom, 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 boom by killing them all. You tend to kill things very, very easily with sniper rifles in this game. So this is just one of the most amazing perks in the entire game. Moving on to the non-combat related perks, uh, Animal Whisper, the first one, Animal Trading, allows you, your companion, to gain bonus health and damage, which is great. These things, the Animal Companions, are actually very useful in combat. They're very hard to kill, um, so giving them extra damage is good. They don't usually need extra con, but sometimes they do get loaded upon. Spirit Animal provides you with better passive bonuses. I'm not sure what all the passive bonuses are of Spirit Animals. Um, but this could be particularly useful depending on what the bonuses are. So you probably take this one depending on what spirit animal you're using. And then Vengeful Bond. This is an absolutely amazing. It's not going to happen all the time because frankly spirit animals again are hard to kill and they have tons of health. But just for the second sake, let's say this does happen to you a couple times uh, very you know, regularly. 50% critical chance and 2 AP is a lot if your animal companion drops below 25%. The problem is you don't really want your animal companion to die, so you're not going to like leave them at 25%, and they're not likely to survive if they're just sitting around at 25%. So it's good on paper, but I don't know how much you're going to use this in practice. Moving along to barter, buying multiple items instead of just one penny pincher provides a 20% discount. This is pretty good. I mean, generally speaking, when you buy stuff, you're going to buy you know multiple things at once. So if you just wait to buy until you know you're going to buy at least one item or two items, excuse me, uh, this is like essentially just a 20% discount off items. So this is very, very, very good. Um, Antique Appraiser is a 5% chance of junk being sold at 50 times your value. If you really want money, this is not a bad one to pick up. Um, I, I, at least one character on your team should you know, have their barter skill being leveled up so that prices are better for you selling and buying. So if you have that character, this is not a bad pickup on that character. Moving along to nerd stuff, targeting overdrive allows robots you hack will be, to be attacked by enemies or they will attack them. And this is okay. Obviously, this is probably going to come in handy a lot later in the game when there are more enemies and robots. It's not so useful early on. Uh, same with electric leakage. There isn't a whole ton of enemies or robots to hack early on. So if you're considering getting these, you're probably going to want to get these a little bit later in the game. You know, not late game, but not at the beginning. Overclock is going to give robots you hack an extra 2 AP. If you're planning on, you know, going down this route and getting all these perks, you're absolutely going to want to take this one and making robots your bitch. Um, it just really depends on how committed you want to do that, and that's really going to depend on your style of play. 
Bomb recovery is a great perk in the explosives tree. You disarm landmines a lot in this game, and a 33% chance to drop a grenade is great. Grenades are super useful because they don't have like a hit chance. You lob it in and everyone takes damage, uh, which is always good and destroys cover. So this is a good one to take, particularly early on, because you're going to get the most use of it the sooner you take it. Mortar Blast is an interesting perk to take, uh, and it's very difficult to use effectively, except in some circumstances where may maybe enemies are dug in very deeply. The thing about explosives is generally, in my experience, particularly on the harder difficulty, turn one, your heavy ordnance user, the person who's going to have explosives, is going to rocket launch into the middle of the biggest group of enemies they can. Um, and this delays that launch by one turn for extra damage. Usually you can kill most of the enemies even on the highest difficulty in one rocket or get them so low that the rest of your team can pick them off. So I don't imagine this is going to see a lot of use early on in the game, but maybe later on in the game when the enemies are tougher and you need that extra damage, if you can predict where they're going to be, this might be useful. Blast Radius is absolutely the best perk in this skill line because you want your explosives to hit as many enemies as you can. Uh, and a 40% increase is huge. Um, so when you fire that rocket on turn one, instead of maybe hitting four enemies, maybe you hit seven or you hit eight. Uh, this, this is a no-brainer if you're going to be using a heavy ordnance character, and you should be. Your, your character that uses heavy weapons should have at least one slot as a rocket launcher, so this should be great. When it comes to the first aid skill line, there aren't too many great perks here. A lot of them revolve around uh, teammates going down or party mates going down. Um, which you never want to plan for, right? You always want to plan that everyone's going to be alive. Obviously, this doesn't always happen. But emergency response could be good on a melee character. Um, in case somebody goes down, you'll gain combat speed so you can get off more attacks. It's worth considering on a melee character. Um, and overhealing is pretty much good on any character that's got first aid. I mean, being able to boost your con over the max is excellent when you heal, which you heal a lot in combat. So that's worth considering. Um, physical Therapy and Hippocratic Oath, again, are depending on enemies or allies going down in combat, which is something you never want to rely on or, or postulate happens, so I would consider not getting those. Rally is one of those perks that's probably better on paper than it is uh, in practice because you're going to use this turn one, ideally, right? Like, you're all grouped up, you use it, everyone gets two AP bonus, and they're good to go, and you lose four. That's great. Um, but after turn one, you're probably not going to see much use of this at all because you're going to be spread out because you don't want to get explosive to death all grouped up. And adding two AP doesn't add another attack for most characters. So basically, if it costs four AP to attack and each character has eight by default, you gave them some movement points or some defensive points, which I don't think is worth sacrificing an attack for. And you'd have to do that to several characters in order to make it worth. So it's good for a one use every turn. If that's worth a perk point to you that, or every combat, then maybe consider getting it. Demoralize is one of those abilities, again, that I think is better later in the game than early on. Early on in the game, you want to try and kill things as quickly as possible. And when that becomes harder and harder to do later in the game as enemies get tougher, Demoralize will come more into play. So don't get this one early on in the game. Consider picking up in the middle of the game or so. Moving along to mechanics, Structural Weakness is excellent. Uh, I have my Heavy Ordnance character uh, has mechanics, so giving them extra damage to robots and vehicles is already in line with what they do. This should be a no-brainer for anyone on their like Heavy Ordnance type character. If you're a character that likes to deploy things, Handy is a great perk to take. This is a very situational perk because you don't have to you know, summon tools or deployables. So it, I only, you're only going to take this on a character that focuses on doing that. Reinforced Plating is an excellent one to take on your Mechanic or Heavy Ordnance character. Um, again, it's probably going to be later in the game. You don't fight with your vehicle that too, too much early on in the game. Um, and you don't really have a lot of robots either. So um, unless you're a character that's hacking a lot of robots, this is probably going to be a lot less useful than it could. Fortify is just not that great in my opinion. Um, giving 5 armor is not a ton of armor. It's a lot of armor early on in the game. It's not so much armor later in the game. Um, by the time you get this perk, you're going to be probably somewhere in the middle to late game, depending on how fast you rush, rush mechanics, which I don't expect people will just rush that. Um, so I think by the time you get it, it wouldn't be as good as if you took it early on in the game. Survival is another great perk that just gives you flat damage against animals and mutants. Anyone who has survival should take this. Anything that boosts damage in any way at any time is always a good perk to take, because you want to try and kill things before they kill you. Um, so if you, any characters that you have survival on, this is probably only going to be like one or two characters, you should absolutely take Big Game Hunter. 
If you've made it all the way to Big Game Hunter in Survival, which is quite an investment, you might as well go all the way to 10 and get Explorer's Instinct. Revealing the entire world map and all Discover locations is just a huge bonus, and it'll make it easier for you to find and do everything you want, so you're probably going to want to take this at some point on one character just to complete everything. As far as toaster repair goes, um, the perks here basically deal with fixing toasters in the game. I think these just give you XP uh, or bonuses. Um, they're kind of scattered throughout the whole course of the game, so this is very much going to depend on whether you went that line or not. It's always good to have at least one person with, you know, you want to have at least every skill maxed probably at some point on one character so that you have 10 on every character. So somebody's going to take this, and if they're taking it, you'll probably want to take uh, minimally the last one toasty, but I don't know if the other ones are absolutely necessary. Fire damage bonus is great um, if you're playing with like a flamethrower character or somebody that does like, explosion damage. But the other two I don't think are absolutely necessary. Moving on to weapon modding, Scrounger's Touch is a very, very good perk. You should consider getting this one right away on one of your characters because it allows you to, when you field strip a weapon, when you disassemble it, it gives you a chance of providing weapon mods. If you install a weapon mod in a weapon, I have not found a way to remove it. Maybe you can, um, but I haven't found one. So you're going to go through weapon mods uh, fairly often. And being able to get yourself a, a steady supply of those is good because they'll boost your accuracy, or your crit chance, your damage. So you absolutely want to take this one. Powder Packer is also really good because it's going to increase the ammo you find when looting at a minimum of plus one. This means if you find a rocket, you're going to get two rockets. Uh, you can never have enough rockets in this game. So this is a very good one to have um, in order to get more ammo for those sorts of weapons. Moving along to Weird Science, Overcharge is interesting because it allows you to do extra damage on your next attack, but it has a chance of blowing up in your face. It's a very small chance, but it's again, it's one of those where I don't generally like risking something bad happening to gain a benefit. 5% is rather low, so you might consider taking it. Microwave Research increases the damage of an energy weapon by 0.5 for each point of armor the target has. This is going to help you destroy heavily armored targets a lot faster. Um, if you're using energy weapons, you're definitely going to want to take this one. There's just It's just a no-brainer. Not every character in your group is going to use energy weapons but the ones that should or are using energy weapons should be taking weird signs and they should take this one. Conductive Beams is again no brainer if you have a character who's using energy weapons, they should have weird science. 10% chance to electrocute enemies dealing energy damage. I'm not a big fan again of RNG based abilities that have a negative effect, but ones that only have a positive effect, a lot more worth considering. Moving along to sneaky shit, second chance is a good perk if you are trying to make a very stealthy character. Um, an extra extra second detection time might make it so you can get in melee range and knife someone to death before they can sound the alarm. So this is definitely one if you're trying to make like a total assassin type build you're going to want to have. Close call is one of those where you're never planning for failure. So it might be good to have because, you know, you might make mistakes sometimes. But if you're save scumming or if you save before you go through a difficult area and you set off an alarm or trap, realistically, you're probably going to reload. So I don't know if I would spend a perk point here unless you, you know, get to an area of the game where it's absolutely mandatory to get through and there's just nothing you can do about it. But again, it's RNG based. Not sure I'd recommend this one. Lights out, absolutely one of the best perks in the game if you can pull it off. 200% damage when you sneak up on an enemy and attack them. If you're going for that assassin type build, you're going to take this one. I mean, this is going to make it so you one hit kill some of these. Maybe you can stealth take down a whole group. Armor modding, there's only one perk here, tender loving care. All squad members gain plus five armor while this character is present. This is absolutely a no-brainer perk. Plus 5 armor is a good amount of armor. It's not a ton of armor at the end game, but free armor for this person standing around is excellent. That's just going to reduce how much damage your party takes. You're absolutely going to want to grab that one. Stay tuned. I'm going to be doing a character creation guide for this game as well as some build guides and getting started guide. So if you need help with the game, take a look at our channel over the next coming week. We're going to have a lot of content going up for Wasteland 3. Also, if you have specific questions about the game, where to get what, how quests resolve, what you can do, be sure to head over to the official wiki and check it out. We've been updating it uh, for the last week or so. We'll continue updating it over the next week or so, trying to get all the information about the game into it.